Okay guys, welcome to another episode of Rotten Reviews. Today I'm going to take a look at 2012's Battleship. Um, we have a 34% on the tomato meter and a 54% on the audience score. Um, my opinion on this movie is that it's just like considered a fun popcorn uh, flick. Um, you're supposed to shut off all the logic regions of your brain and just uh, take in the spectacular visuals and the action and, um, you know, the battle between the U.S. Navy and the alien armada. Um, apparently that wasn't very effective because it's considered rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I saw this on DVD when it was first released and I found it enjoyable but again I was in the mood that I had switched off all the logic and was just expecting you know something to entertain me um, if you do just switch on just the first circuit in your brain that has any logic to it um, yeah this movie will sorely uh, rub you the wrong way <clears throat> I think that um, you know, the basic premise that um, aliens came to Earth and for some reason only the U.S. Navy is capable of battling them. Um, this comes across to me, as does the rest of the film, as some kind of joint effort between toy company Hasbro and the U.S. Navy. Um, together, perhaps Hasbro wanted to start a new franchise to sell more toys. Um, Hasbro certainly had success with the Transformers movies and as stupid as the Transformers movies quickly got and as rotten as they quickly got, um, certainly it helped toy sales and certainly those movies continue to generate money uh, as bad as I personally think they are. Um, this was an attempt to start fresh like that again on Battleship. Um, they had a lot less material to work with. They had only a board game and an electronic version of that board game. Um, so yeah, it was always going to be a lot tougher, whereas with Transformers, the toy line, you had so much more material to work with that could be made into a film. Um, again, now, on the Navy's part in this, what would the Navy want with uh, teaming up with Hasbro? Well, it comes across as basically a recruiting video, um, a way to get a Hollywood movie to say, hey, look how relevant and cool the Navy is and look at this cool soundtrack we have when we're fighting aliens and hey you might want to step along to the uh, Navy recruiting office and check out what we have on offer I'm guessing this is like the Navy's point of view this is a public relations for recruitment um, so together Hasbro and the Navy teamed up and they delivered Battleship it shows um, it also shows that uh, Hasbro um, hasn't learned anything from the Transformers. Um, Transformers went rotten really quick. Um, it didn't get better with Battleship, but they tried. Um, in my opinion, they failed. I Now, I was um, pleasantly surprised by the movie, and I found it entertaining. Um, I didn't pay for it. I got to see it for free on DVD, but I actually enjoyed it for what it was. It didn't offend me. Um, it didn't uh, insult me in any way. Um, now, I know that's not the case with everybody because there are some pretty huge um, plot holes, logic holes, right off the bat with this before we even get to the aliens. For example, the main character, the protagonist, he's a loser. Uh, a criminal. Um, basically, he's um, not the type of material that would be an officer in the Navy, but yet right away we jump to just right down the road in time and he's a lieutenant in the Navy and becomes actually the captain of a destroyer. So, um, no, that's not realistic. Um, anybody in the Navy could tell you, even if you didn't have the criminal record and you enlisted in the Navy, you would be looking at an eight year or even more than an eight year stretch of time, best case that you would find yourself as a lieutenant in the Navy. It's still a big stretch. Um, so let's move past that into the actual rotten reviews. A lot of these reviews, of course, aren't going to be rotten. People enjoyed this movie like I did. Um, but let's tear into it, you know, because I like to tear into it. Um, five stars. Best action sci-fi movie. Well, 
let's uh, put me down for where I think the star should be. I think it should be um, three stars. Now, again, I'm saying disconnect your logic centers of the brain. Um, just consider this for how well it entertains. <clears throat> I think it deserves three stars uh, because the entertainment is there. Um, Again, it's not offensive. Um, it has a nice soundtrack. It has a good pace. Um, it's totally ridiculous, but if you're expecting that kind of ridiculousness, it works. Um, personally, I say, yeah, I'm sticking with three stars. Um, I won't even go down to two and a half. Um, maybe, you know, that's um, I'm the outlier. Um, I won't go above three stars, though. I'm sticking with three stars. Uh, four stars. Yeah, it's a bit cheesy, but the end is worth watching. FYI, the big black guy with prosthetic legs is real. He is a highly decorated retired army colonel, three bronze stars and a purple heart, among many others. And yeah, he gets to kick some ass in the end. Always good to see a true American hero in a patriotic movie. Minor spoiler, while far from realistic, you know that if a bunch of retired war vets were asked, they would come back at the drop of a hat. This uh, reviewer is referring to the end part of the movie in which, yes, there is a battleship finally involved. Um, you know, it's the Missouri, it's a museum, and in the context of the movie, just a handful, literally less than 10 old uh, Navy veterans uh, take this museum, start it up, get it armed, and take it out to sea to do battle with the aliens. Um, it is completely nonsensical in every sense of the word, but the movie carries it off like it's completely plausible and keeps you entertained. Um, but it's even cartoons wouldn't steep to this level of um, logical nonsense. Um, but you know, it moves along fast enough that you just disconnect the logic centers of your brain and it's entertaining. Um, Let's continue five stars. This film is cheesy, nonsensical, over the top, and cliche. Despite that, it is one of the funnest movies I've ever seen. And again, I say that's why I give it three stars, because it was fun. Um, it was fun despite the fact that Rihanna is a great singer, but a crap actor, yet somehow they put her in this film for whatever reason, I guess to have her name on it. Um, despite her, it was still fun. Despite, um, Every aspect of it having logical problems, it was fun. That's why I stick with three stars. Uh, no, I don't agree with these three and a half and four stars, certainly not the five stars. Um, but if you see this, uh, I wouldn't pay money to see it, but if it's part of your streaming package or you know somebody with it on DVD or Blu-ray, yeah, just watch it, um, sit back and just get a, get a fun ride out of it. Um, three and a half stars. You know your typical action alien apocalypse feel-good movie. If that's what you're in the mood for, it'll do the job. With shout-outs to the Navy and branches of the armed forces. Yeah, again... It's obvious, uh, even you know, part way into this, that the Navy uh, had a hand in it. They were on the team with Hasbro, uh, and it shows. Uh, four stars, fun, entertaining, nonsensical. What a movie like this should be. Uh, three stars. This film makes literally no sense at all. Why are the aliens fighting ships instead of population centers? Aliens look like humans with weird feet and goatees. Defy all laws of physics all the time. Check. Get ship out of mothballs in a couple of hours, check. Have the, screw, have the screw up goofball in charge of saving the world, check. His qualifications, he got that there burrito battleship plays more like an extended commercial for the Navy than a movie, but that all said, it was fun, it was kind of fun, and the CGI wasn't bad. I largely agree, the CGI was good. Uh, there wasn't anything offensive about it. Some of the alien weapons, they tried to uh, throw in little nods to the battleship game by making the alien projectiles like look just like battleship game pegs. Um, there was an extended uh, plot of the middle of the movie in which um, they are playing like a real-life game of the battleship game with the alien ships trying to hit it um, and vice versa. Um, I actually appreciated how they worked that in there. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's obvious that they put thought into how to work the actual battleship game into this. Um, now, the extended commercial for the Navy, I agree that's what it comes off as. 
um, the goofball in charge of saving the world. Yeah, um, they're reviewing. They're referring to the very first part of the movie where Taylor Kitsch's um, character he wins the girl's affections by getting her a microwave burrito from a closed convenience store by breaking in through the ceiling to get it for her and that's how they met and fell in love and then she's his girlfriend while he's in the Navy later and she happens to be uh, the Navy Admiral's daughter. A lot of this makes no logical sense on any level but it's still fun to go along with it um, because you're inside of a fantastic Navy commercial. Um, one star. There is literally no build-up to the aliens appearing. The film just throws them at you about 20 minutes in. The characters are uninteresting. For a movie that opens with a burrito heist, I thought it would have been a lot more entertaining. But yeah, um, they're talking about you know, uh, one aspect, one big failing in the plot logic. There's so many, but one of them is that the aliens uh, come to Earth, and these aliens are well skilled in invading other planets, as shown later in the movie through um, a flashback scene. Um, but these aliens, like, drop into the ocean, set up this impervious shield around themselves and around the ocean around Hawaii, and um, for some reason, need to like um, you know send send some kind of message back to their alien armada or back to their home planet to send reinforcements. It doesn't make any logical sense in any regard. It would take me an hour to tell you where all the logic fails. It's completely ridiculous, but again, it's entertaining. Um, two stars. They came light years through space, but don't have bulletproof windows. Use conventional ballistic explosives. Have swim fins on their spacecraft. Forgot that the sun is bright. They're seven feet tall, weigh 600 pounds, and have high-tech armed steel suits. But you can take them in a fist fight. Okay, I'm in. Please go on. They're being sarcastic. Yeah, there's nothing logical about this. Um, but the movie's still fun. It keeps you along for the ride, even though every part of your brain is screaming that it's illogical. Um, four and a half stars. A bit corny, illogical, and predictable. But seeing the mighty Mo under power again and kicking butt brings a glad tear to my eyes. Yeah, there's a scene at the end, like I said, the Missouri battleship is brought out of mothballs and put back into service to fight the alien, um, you know, the big bad alien battleship. And it has ACDC music playing and everything comes off fine. It's just so logically ridiculous. Um, the music score is pretty darn good to listen to as well. Why do the critics all think a movie has to mean something? Sit back, sit back, relax, and cheer for our team. You'll have a lot more fun. Yeah, they're they're saying um, you have to kind of take it like a drunken football game. You drink uh, all kinds of like overpriced warm beer, and you sit in the bleachers, and you just let yourself go and start screaming at the field, even though the players can't hear you. Yeah, just like go along with it, and you'll have a good time. Uh, but don't try to figure out some kind of logic to this because even like that football game, does that make a lot of logical sense? Uh, does it make sense to pay like $12 for a cup of warm beer, sit on a hard metal bleacher and scream at players playing a game, um, you know, far from you that can't hear you and act like a fool. No, but you're having a good time and you have to kind of take this movie along the same lines. There's nothing logical about this. Um, yes, it's logical that you paid your money for the ticket. Um, so yeah, enjoy, but uh, don't try to find problems with it because the whole premise of the movie is a problem, right? Um, Three and a half stars. I actually like this movie. It is moving when they reactivate the old USS Missouri with the old veterans. Yeah, it does come across. Um, it does kind of have an emotional appeal to it. It works. Even though it's ridiculous, it works. Um, and it's enjoyable. Uh, four stars. This is a very entertaining movie and... The storyline is actually good. It's not an Oscar winning winning movie, but definitely entertaining. Yes, I'll agree, but three stars. Four stars, too much. Uh, two stars, it's really long for this plot. It's very cheesy. I think very little research went into how the Navy actually works. Again, don't look too hard into the logic. Um, for example, at one point, 
one of the aliens in this mech suit. He comes on board the destroyer and he is doing something with the engine in the engine room of the destroyer, like scanning it with some device or whatever. Um, at the time, you watch it the first time and you don't seem to realize that it makes no mis sense that he's on board this destroyer doing something with the engine, like not only how did he get there, but why? What's the point? Um, why would aliens need to examine the engine of a Navy destroyer? It makes no sense. Like a lot of things, but the scene, or the scene um, and the payoff where the alien gets destroyed by the destroyer's gun cannon um, is entertaining to watch. So again, you know, even the things that make no logical sense set up um, things um, later on in the movie that are entertaining, that are fun in the payoff. So again, I say three stars, even though it's complete nonsense. Um, three stars, make no mistakes. This is in fact a story about battleships, not alien invasion in Hawaii. They waste no time in explaining the differences between old school battleships, example USS Missouri, and the new destroyers. It's a movie where Rihanna can foretell Donald Trump would be the upcoming POTUS, and China is the next superpower challenging the U.S. One thing I noticed is the alien hopping spaceships bear very close resemblance to those fighter airships from Terminator Skynet. Um, yeah, there's a lot of strange stuff put in there, but one thing I'll say is the CGI is pretty good. Um, I don't know how much it cost. I think the budget of the movie uh, seems a little high for what was in it, but who knows. Um, the CGI, the alien weapons, they didn't make logical sense, but they looked cool. Okay, so they were fun, uh, but don't think you'll find logic in the alien weapons, um, although they're visually fine. The CGI is good. Um, three and a half stars. It is an Oscar-worthy movie. No. It is the best movie on Earth. No. It is a fun and enjoyable movie. Yes. Great action, great visuals, great performances, cool take on the classic game. Yeah, I'm surprised that you could take the game of Battleship and make this out of it. Um, I suppose if you're a good enough writer or writers, they can make a story out of anything. Um, this story is just as good as any other because, again, we're not even starting with um, toys from the past. We're not starting from a cartoon. We're starting with just a flat-up, straight-up, boring, by today's standards, board game. And uh, they made something fun out of it, so I have to give them props for that. Um, three and a half stars, very fun, not a good movie to earn prizes, but to say, to see once or twice each year, yeah, you could watch it more than once. Um, I watched it once sober, maybe I could watch it again after a bunch of draft beer, who knows. Uh, five stars, I love this movie, I watch it every time it airs. Four stars, I enjoyed the movie and the actors, it is great they left out the mega stars. That makes better movies, great action and effects. They should have advertised this more, as I did not find out about this gem till after the fact. Um, actually, I think when it came out in the theater, um, the first Avengers movie was still in the theater, so that might have had something to do with it. Um, half a star. Kill it, kill it, horrible movie. Yeah, kill it if you want to take it serious. Don't take it too seriously. Uh, five stars. Fun movie in the same vein as Transformers or any other campy sci-fi. I agree with that. It's made by the same company as Transformers. This is Hasbro. Um, now, Transformers, as an aside, I, I'm not planning on doing rotten reviews because people like these too much, and they are what they are. It's a toy movie. Now, the first movie, I really enjoyed the hell out of it. I wasn't a Transformers fan. I was too old to be a fan of the Transformers cartoons. Um, but, you know, not knowing anything about the Transformers, except that they were robots that transformed into cars and planes, vice versa, I thought the first Transformers movies was really good. Um, it went quickly to crap after that. This one... I wouldn't say it's as good as the first Transformers movies, but it's a hell of an attempt for starting out with just a boring-ass board game. I'll give them that. Um, four stars. Better than people say it is. Four stars. I don't agree with the critics, but then there is very little I don't like when it comes to these movies. I'd make a lousy critic. Laugh out loud. I really enjoyed Battleship. A lot of people do enjoy it. Uh, five stars. I am amazed at bad ratings for this movie. I loved it, and so did my husband. The special effects were amazing. Five stars. I loved it, but I'm just an average Jane. 
three and a half stars. Battleship is two hours of dumb fun, and it's not that bad in my opinion. Fans of naval warfare or anybody who just wants to see a moderate action movie will be entertained. All else, who expect plot twists? Sophisticated storytelling and expertly written dialogue can let this one sink. Yeah, if you're expecting anything expertly written, any kind of logical plot, or, um, you know, highbrow acting or awesome dialogue with quippy one-liners, you're not going to find that. This isn't even up to a Marvel movie standard. This is just dumb fun. Eat your popcorn and enjoy, or drink beer at home and enjoy. Um, five stars, great character development before the action begins, and a pretty pretty decent storyline. I actually got emotional at times, which is an indicator of a good film. I'll agree with that. Um, it had parts that did deliver emotion, uh, but that's not logic. You know, your logic centers are switched off. Um, then yes, there were emotional parts of this movie. It did work in that regard. Uh, five stars, perfect, no, but a wild ride popcorn movie that's entertaining. Five stars, it was actually a really good movie. Not everyone's type of movie, but it was mine. I think it wasn't that much publicized or advertised. That's why the movie didn't receive that much support from the community. Again, I'm thinking it had to do with Avengers. The first Avengers movie was out. We forget how big of a movie that was because, you know, we had Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. That's what we try to think about now. But um, when that first Avengers movie came out, this movie was like in its shadow. This movie was probably completely dwarfed. I believe Avengers had been in the theater at least two weeks before this movie released. That wasn't enough time. Uh, if this movie had been released, say, three months off of the first Avengers, I think it would have done a lot better. Uh, four stars. I don't understand how everyone hates this movie. It was pretty cool to find this movie on my Boxy software. Again, I'm not sure about that Boxy software, whether that's like file sharing or what quasi-semi-legal thing that's in. Um, but a lot of movies, um, it seems that people are getting with that Boxy software. I don't know if that's a uh, saying that it's good or bad though. Uh, five stars. I just don't get you so-called critics. Why would anyone rate a boring movie, Interstellar, Shutter Island, Holmes, etc., higher than a full effects movie like this one? The main reason Battleship didn't make it was because it was released during the same period as the first Avengers movie, and people went for the superhero genre. At least Transformers are still going on and Pacific Rim. If I had the budget, I'd give it for a Battleship sequel and order a few hitmen on you unsatisfied geniuses. Uh, they're making my previous point. This was out during the first Avengers. Avengers movie. Um, they're also bringing up Pacific Rim, and um, yeah, um, I think Pacific Rim has a completely different feel and intent than this movie. Uh, I think this movie's a lot more fun than Pacific Rim. I know Pacific Rim is considered a better movie. Um, I'll have to recheck on the Rotten Tomato scores, but I enjoyed this more than Pacific Rim, and Pacific Rim was also equally as logically stupid. Um, but this one I found more enjoyable. Uh, one star. The last time I recall, there were no aliens involved in the board game. F this shit. Yeah, that's true. Um, but again, if it had been straight up from the board game with just, say, the Chinese Navy or North Korean Navy or whatever the bad guy is that's acceptable um, fighting the U.S. Navy, um, it would have been completely boring. There would absolutely be no point. In fact, Aliens are probably the only thing that make it interesting. Uh, as a writer, it would have to be up to aliens or maybe uh, do like the final countdown did and go back in time to World War II, something off the chain like that. Because if this were just regular naval combat, it would have been a complete dud, worse than it turned out. Um, so uh, I completely respect that they had to use aliens as a plot device. Uh, three stars. Crafty way they pulled the game of Battleship into the movie Battleship. If you give a transcribed English American message to a foreigner, would they understand it the same way you intended? Now trying that with an alien race that doesn't know our alphabet exists, oh yeah, of course they'll understand. Yeah, they're going into the plot logic again. Um, you know, how do you deliver, uh, you know, a message to aliens? Yeah, that's complete nonsense, but, you know, a lot of sci-fi action movies have people going back in time and talking to other civilizations and they're all speaking English. 
uh, aliens arrive or humans arrive on alien planets and um, there's no uh, attempt to say that the technology is translating. They just start speaking to each other. You know, that's just sci-fi nonsense. It's the least of this movie's plot problems. Uh, this movie has so many plot holes and logical problems. Uh, the problem of like delivering messages to the aliens is the least of them. Uh, two and a half stars. Great special effects, great music, ACDC, a reasonable ending, but otherwise the film completely sucked. Every cliche imaginable is used, predictable, not a good movie. Um, again, I think the cliches were actually used uh, because they're so familiar and to keep the audience drawn up into it. And I think it largely works. Um, again, you have to switch the logic part of your brain off. Three stars. Since giant alien robots weren't enough to satisfy Hasbro's greed, they decided to make a movie based off of a board game that didn't even have a cartoon or comics, unlike Transformers and G.I. Joe. The script needs a bit of work. And do you want to see giant alien ships? You have to sit through tedious human conflicts for the first half hour. The main character got a girlfriend just by getting her a chicken burrito by breaking into a store. Nice to know the writers are capable of interpreting women as, mm, yeah, again, nitpicking. Um, it is a Hasbro movie. Uh, G.I. Joe, in my opinion, was worse, though. Uh, G.I. Joe had what looks to be a bigger budget, it seems like that, and yet G.I. Joe did nothing for me. I didn't bother with the second one. The first one, I couldn't get through it. It bored me so much. Um, I guess if you were a fan of G.I. Joe, it was fantastic, but to me it was just complete bore. Um, one and a half stars. Aliens so sophisticated that removing their sun visors messes them up. They should have worn military baseball caps. Spoiler alert, sleep well tonight because Uncle Sam saves the world again. Cringe worthy. Yeah, of course um, Uncle Sam's going to save the world because this is a Navy recruitment video. Um, do you think they're going to endorse a movie in which they don't save the world? Of course not. In fact, as an aside, the first Avengers movie, yeah, uh, the Navy didn't participate and they didn't participate only because in the Avengers movie they had like a globalist cabal of you know shadowy figures um the illuminati whoever you want to call them of shield um calling the shots and directing the navy what to do um so they pulled all of their cooperation from the producers of the first avengers movie um so the navy is very sensitive to you know how they're portrayed even in comic book movies and movies like this so um, you know, they, that also puts a further constraint on the plot, so take it for what it is. It's not just Hasbro, it's also a Navy thing going on here. Um, five stars, love it, great music and action. Five stars, loved it, great action and music. Acting was good also. I wouldn't say the acting was good, the acting wasn't horrible. Um, now if you get into Rihanna, yeah, the acting was horrible because she's not an actress. She's just thrown in there to be there. Um, I'm probably going to call this one because um, I've made my point. Most people like this. Um, Battleship 54% audience score, considered rotten. Uh, it could have easily been 60% um, and considered not rotten. Critics, of course, I'm surprised they even gave it 34%. It had so many plot holes. Why aren't the critics down to 5%? I don't know. I can't figure them out. Um, anyway, this is worth seeing once. Um, it's, it doesn't give you the feeling of being rotten. It gives you the feeling of you're having a good time. So I'm going to leave it at that, and um, I will see you on the next Rotten Reviews.